thanks for coming down to this session and uh, listening to what I've got to say about uh, soil compaction. I'm hoping it's useful. As I said before, I've tried to make it as uh, as as practical as possible with some uh, real uh, examples, but also using some of the data that we've collected at uh, at uh, Crichton, the farm at uh, the Dairy Research Centre. So basically today I'm just going to be talking about soil compaction, building a bit on what was uh, uh, said uh, in the previous session this morning, uh, just talking about uh, a method of uh, identification of the soil structure, uh, showing some data we've uh, collected from grassland uh, yield um, changes through uh, the effects of compaction and also just mentioning briefly some methods of improving soil structure. Oh, yes, I can do, yes. Yeah. Right. So first of all, just to say about uh, soil structure and the importance of macropores, hopefully this is not uh, boring you too much. We heard a bit about this this morning, but I think it's important that uh, we think about this in relation to uh, uh, soil compaction, because it's not just the, the aggregates of soil that are important when a soil's compacted and those are being brought together. Obviously, that does uh, make it more difficult for root growth and increases the potential for root damage, but uh, it's also the, the fact that these ma uh, macro and micro pores are being reduced when the soil aggregates are being brought together. And as we said, <clears throat> as we said previously, this is important both for water infiltration and movement of the water through the soil profile. The other thing, and this is also mentioned this morning, but again, I think it's important to say, that if you get a very compacted soil, you can get this crust along the top, a surface capping, where the rain finds it very difficult then, or water finds it very difficult then to even get into the soil profile. It sits on the surface, and if there's any kind of aspect to the field, then what you get is this runoff, which uh, not only uh, means that the uh, rain runs off through the, across the surface of the soil, but also can take uh, fine particles and soil particles with it. So that means that you get this uh, effect of erosion of the soil. So with soil compaction, the, one of the most important things to think about is that uh, it's as, the, as the soil gets wetter, it's more prone to uh, becoming compacted. Uh, dry, hard soils are harder uh, to compact, but as the soil wets up and gets closer to field holding capacity, then this is where you uh, get uh, the potential for the uh, for, for soil compaction to occur. And as you can see in this diagram here, with the same weight, the same size of uh, tractor, the same tractor wheel, you're getting a, a larger zone of effect of compaction deeper into the soil as well as a, a, a more pronounced uh, depression at the soil surface. So with the problems of compaction, just to say about that, you're getting this surface uh, capping and the breakdown of the structure of the surface that they, then can lead to erosion. The compaction also gets poor root penetration, reduced water infiltration, but also when the water moves into the, the soil, if it's become compacted, you've got uh, smaller uh, gaps, these micropores and macropores between the uh, soil aggregates to allow that to, uh, to, to move through the soil profile. So you've got more chance of the water being held within the soil, which can be useful in drier conditions, but in wetter conditions, it means you're not getting the sufficient drainage and these can lead to waterlogged soils. And if you're getting waterlogged soils, then what you can do is the microbial population then changes from this useful group uh, that's turning over the nutrients and making them available to the plants to a much less uh, effective uh, group of uh, uh, microbes that uh, forms this, uh, uh, that moves into an anaerobic state. Um, and so this can also lead to nutrient deficiency within the soil. And this is an extreme example of compaction where we've got, we've seen the effects of very compacted soil and water logging within the soil. And what you can notice here, if you're looking at the soil yourself and you're doing some kind of assessment of the soil, then you can see a change in the soil colour. We always think of uh, soil being, uh, uh, when I'm asking people to uh, 
think about a healthy soil, uh, an uncompacted soil, a soil that's working effectively and supporting the crop that's in there, that uh, it's got a nice brown or black rich colour to it. But if you get water logging, you move into anaerobic conditions, what you start to find is a kind of bluer, greyer colour to the soil. And in, in fact, what you can also see are these orange fleckings within the soil. Uh, this is uh, a lot of the, uh, the majority of UK soils as uh, iron within the soil complex. This is usually spread throughout the whole of the, the soil complex. But uh, if you get waterlogged soils or water being held within the soil for any period of time, then this uh, allows the uh, iron within the soil to move into the water. And when that starts moving away through fissures in the soil or around root channels, what you can see is this orange colour uh, as, the, as it comes in con back in contact with the air. And basically this is just oxidised uh, iron or, or rust really. So these are good uh, indications that you may well have a problem with your soil. So just to go on to a method that we've uh, utilised and uh, been developed in conjunction with uh, colleagues at SIUC, uh, Bruce uh, Ball has been very uh, important in developing this, is a, a visual soil assessment or the VEST system, a visual evaluation of soil structure using relatively simple and hopefully uh, user-friendly methodologies using uh, a piece of equipment uh, called a spade uh, to dig a hole in the ground usually down to about a spade depth because especially in grassland that's the uh, more active area of the soil that you want to really be uh, maximizing uh, so digging down there digging a block of soil out uh, breaking it apart and having a look at what the structure is like if you do find that the problems lower down, then you may have to go a couple of spade depths down and go into your more classic um, soil pits. But really, if you just if you think you've got a problem with compaction, then digging a hole in the surface 10 to, uh, uh, 20 to 30 centimeters of the soil uh, should give you a good indication of what's happening. And we use this in conjunction with uh, um, uh, a set of uh, descriptions and photos of uh, soils showing different types of structure degradation. At the top there's an, uh, uh, an indication of a good soil structure with the aggregates breaking down very easily into smaller uh, <coughs> aggregates, quite rounded in size. Uh, but as you get further down the, the uh, indices and he's getting into more compacted soils. What you're seeing is larger soil aggregates as they've been forced closer together, uh, lower uh, porosity, lower root mass. And if you get a very compacted soil, you're actually getting platy or blocky structures of the soil. We've almost lost the whole of the aggregate structure within that soil. And again, it's asking you to consider the uh, the, the, the colour of the soils as well. Another indication of very poor uh, uh, soil structure or a very compacted soil or waterlogged soil is the uh, poor smell you can get from the soil. You can even get this when you just initially put your spade into the soil and start digging out a block of soil. You get a very strong smell from that. Um, Again, it's uh, odd when you ask people to think what soil smells like, but uh, this is uh, using your senses to uh, the full abilities here, and a bad smell is never really uh, a good indication of a, a healthy soil. So just to summarise that really, if you're looking for a compacted soil, you're thinking of what, what does it smell like, what colour, it's like, how easy is it to break up? This is where you start getting your hands dirty and pulling apart the soil structure itself and the soil aggregates. How easy is it to break down to its smallest constituent parts? If you're getting larger soil uh, aggregates, more golf ball size, then you're really looking at uh, the, uh, the start of a compaction problem. And also if you start getting uh, sharper pointed edges to the uh, soil aggregates. So just to come to some of the work that we've been doing at uh, the Crichton uh, in Dumfries at the Dairy Research Centre there. This is some work that's been funded by uh, Dairy Co. We've been looking at actually 
compacting some areas of soil, both with trampling, with mechanical load, that really means a heavy tractor, and I'm comparing this to no compaction. And really what we've been looking at to see the effects both on grass yield and nitrous oxide emissions, with nitrous oxide being um, a greenhouse uh, gas. I'm not going to speak about the uh, nitrous oxide emissions today, I'm just going to focus on the, on the grass yield because of the time constraints. But also this year, and I'm not, I'm not sure the data for this, but I can ask if you want to ask me questions about it later, we have started looking at some remediation of the soils using both surface aeration and a sward lifter. And this experiment is being repeated down at uh, Harper Adams uh, in Shropshire, uh, which, where they've got a, a, a lighter soil type than we've got at Crichton. Uh, there it's more sandy soil and more resistant to compaction just to see how difficult it is or easy it is to uh, uh, compact those kind of soils. The soil we're dealing with up at Crichton is a, a silty loam with uh, in some parts of it uh, measurable amounts of clay. So it's uh, on a silage field that's been in grass for about uh, five years before the experiment started. So it's not as though we're uh, trying to do this on a field that uh, we're trying to uh, compact to destruction, as it were. This is on a field that would be used by farmers in the area. Uh, and again, with the compaction treatments we're putting on, we're really not trying to uh, uh, destroy the sward completely. This is looking at some kind of reasonable or uh, farmer uh, uh, compaction that would be similar to a farmer's use of that field, especially when, they're, uh, when you're uh, increasing your grazing at the start, uh, grazing windows at the start of the season and at the end of the season, and leading back to uh, the, this idea of the wetter soils have got more potential for compaction. And this is really, bring, this compaction uh, issues have really moved up the agenda within soils and especially in the uh, dairy farming community uh, with uh, the poor weather we've had in the last couple of years. And this is just an example of how we compacted the fields here. We've got the, uh, the cows moving there. We actually use live animals to tr trample uh, the field there. And this is what it looked like afterwards with this porching effect. And then with the tractor, we drove them across the field and then back across in between the re wheelings to get uh, a mean compaction across the field. And this is just some pictures of what it looked like about six weeks after the compaction treatment. But you can still see the effects of the compaction then and the trampled one uh, were, uh, was, is important to remember that picture. And this is just some examples of using the visual assessment here, and you can see what we were talking about before, these kind of larger, more angled uh, soil aggregates in the trampled, uh, compacted areas, where well, that's only coming down to about 0 to 10 centimetres, where the same kind of uh, aggregates, uh, you can see down to about 20 centimetres, due to the increased weight of the tractor. And this is all compared to the no compacted area where you're getting uh, smaller aggregates and easy to break, easier to break up. So just to go into some, quickly into some results, we've had two years worth of uh, cuts at the moment. We took three silage cuts and what we found overall, there was about a 10% reduction if you add all the three uh, silage cuts together uh, in yield. However, what we found is with the first cut, we saw a more dramatic reduction in yield. And especially in the first year after compaction, we saw the trampled uh, plots uh, decrease by uh, around 20%, uh, where the tractor compaction only accounted for about 13% reduction. And I think this is to do with the opening up of the sward due to the porching of the animal's hooves. This year, we've seen more of what I would have expected. After a second round of compaction at the end of 2012, what we found is uh, a 30% reduction in yield from the tractor compacted plots, and again, around a 20% reduction in the uh, tr uh, trampled plots. What surprised me though is uh, when you take the second cut, the one in the middle of the year, when conditions are improving within the soil, you seem to get some kind of recovery from the compacted plots. And I think this is to do with a number of reasons. The improving um, weather conditions is getting slightly drier, even in the southwest of Scotland. Uh, this is the case. Uh, and uh, it, the compaction, the effects of compaction has become less 
uh, of a factor. But also I think there's also uh, new residual nutrients that weren't used by the trampled and tractor swords uh, against the uh, uncompacted yields. And also, especially in 2013, the growth stage of the trampled and the tractor plots were much, uh, it was retarded in relation to the uh, uncompacted plots. So I think we were cutting uh, to almost two different growth stages there, and this uh, it probably uh, enhanced the vigour of the, uh, the, 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 the compacted plots. Well, by the time we come to the third cut, really, you're uh, not seeing a great deal of difference. Just to say about remediation and working depths, this is some, uh, if really, we've been looking at uh, uh, aerators, which are looking at are probably not to 10 to 20 centimetres, so surface aeration. Your sword lifters is looking at a deeper depth of uh, 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 reintroducing structure back to the soil. And if you've really got a problem at depth, then you're looking at subsoilers. And this is just uh, one thing to think about, not if you're not doing the whole field, I mean, even with this field, I might have uh, just re uh, ploughed it up and started again. But if you really want to look at uh, uh, a mechanical way of, um, of uh, um, introducing structure back into this, then not doing your whole field, just doing the problem areas, and especially with wheel ruts, is working across that and leaving uh, the soil on either side so the water can run off that and into, into the uh, soil on either side. So just some ideas about minimising compaction, if just making sure that uh, if you're using tractors, they're not uh, the heaviest ones you can get and you're not carrying extra weight around with you, but also thinking about reducing the uh, ground pack pressure with uh, low inflation pressure or uh, balloon tyres. With animals, cow tracks are really useful. Maybe sacrificing part of your field there uh, to move uh, cows, say, from one field to another, uh, but at least you're uh, minimising the damage that they're doing and keeping them onto uh, one uh, particular area. And also thinking about how you're going to move your animals around there. Uh, but also, in general, with compaction, if you're, if you're doing, improving the soil, and re reintroducing structure to the soil, the water then still has to go somewhere. So checking your drains and your ditches is important. Um, so, and finally, just some things to consider. Make sure your drainage is working. That's really important. And where the drains run out to, and if that water can move away once you've improved the structure of the soil. Visual assessment of the soil, I think, is a really important uh, way of looking about uh, where your compaction is, what depth of the soil is compacted to, because you need to work at the correct depth. It's no use working into compaction. You need to work from beneath it to actually break it up and improve the structure from the depth. And also, if you're, if you're using a visual assessment, if you think you've got a compaction problem, then look at, dig a hole there and see what it looks like. If you're unsure how badly compacted that is, then pick another part of the field where you feel there isn't a compaction problem, maybe close to a hedgerow or on the uh, uh, far side of the field where there hasn't been as much activity and compare and contrast the two. I still tend to do this if I'm unfamiliar with the soil uh, texture of that particular field. And also taking photographs is very useful. My holiday snaps would be deemed very boring, I think, as they're just, a lot of them just consist of blocks of soil, but uh, it's a good reference to have. And then just finally, if you do improve your soil structure, especially if you're using something like a, a subsoiler or a sward lifter, then it's not a silver bullet. This isn't going to then prevent any further soil compaction occurring. If you run across the soil again, and previous research has shown this, you can do over 50% of the compaction damage on that first pass with the tractor or the heavy piece of machinery. Right, hopefully I've kept the time there and uh, yes. thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll answer questions later. <laughs>